Guys, there's only two things that I eat and consume every single day. Water and Vite Ramen. I'm sure that you guys can relate to it. I'm sure that you mix it up and, and that you change. I do Vite Ramen for one very specific reason, which is I work out the same time at every single day. I can't do that on a full stomach. I also can't go and get the effort out of the training if I don't have something that is giving me the energy. Now, first off, and you guys know ramen, I would put myself as an aficionado. I'm in Portland. We've got some wonderful places to go. I can make Vite Ramen at home. I can have it ready in three minutes. You guys know what quinoa is? Quinoa is very popular and, and, and people love to eat it. Uriah Faber, by example, refers to it as a superfood. Fight ramen is made from quinoa, but now you're having a ramen for one. You got a broth, you got something to drink. It smells absolutely fantastic, but it's, it's the nutrients in it. You've got your micros and your macros. However, you have the protein. I said this to Uriah Faber just by example. He loves it. And we're both doing the same thing, which is we simply eat it each day before we go to practice. Three minutes. I want to recommend it to you. Guys, click the link below. Use my code CHAIL at checkout. You can also go to viteramen.com slash CHAIL. Again, use the code CHAIL. That's going to get you a $25 worth within a bundle. Or you can just click on the link below. Nate Diaz is going to get ragdolled. Nate Diaz is going to get beat up. I read these things today, and I don't disagree with them. I've seen Nate Diaz beat up, and I've seen Nate Diaz ragdolled. Are we good here? Should I get up and go? Before I do, what's that got to do with anything? I mean, I got to ask you that question. I really would like an answer. I've heard the arguments. I know about Chemayev being younger. I understand that. I understand that Chemayev is a very good wrestler and that Nate has the history of letting other people dictate when they're on the feet on the ground. Like, I feel as though I understand the entire thing. Did somebody forget? That's not how these matches are contested. I, mean, I do agree that Chemayev is going to get to pick the position. I do, I mean, what, what, ragdoll. Ragdoll means like you can throw a guy down. Just so you understand what this expression is. And then beat him up means once you throw him down, you start punching him a whole lot. I'm in agreement with everything. I'm here to have a conversation with you, though, on who's going to win the fight. I have seen Nate Diaz ragdoll. I have seen round one. I have seen him be a slow starter. I like. I get the entire thing, and I don't even object that that's going to happen here. But now let's finish the conversation, which is who's going to win the fight. Since when can you not be ragdolled and still win a fight? Since when are you not allowed to be taken down against your will, but you can still win a fight? Since when have you not been allowed to be taken down, held there, and punched, but still get up and win a fight? I mean, it's a very different conversation. I'm not sure that the people that think that Jemaya is going to go out there and whip Diaz versus the people that think Diaz is going to win this fight. I'm not sure that they're both not saying the same thing. Have you thought about it in this perspective? Okay. I'm going to jump around, but I want you guys to hear this story. Okay. Practice room story, me, Nate Diaz. There's a rule. And you guys don't ever get to hear these. Nobody, people will do what I just did. They'll dangle and then go, I can't tell you. And you don't even push on it. You understand that. We all understand you don't talk about what happened in the practice room. Now, there is an exception to that rule. The exception clause is if the other guy did better than you and you want to come on and say something nice about him, that's when it's okay. The whole don't talk about what happened in the practice room is because you, you don't have the right to make a claim that you did something over a guy when it was just in the practice room. So I sparred with Nate Diaz. This is 10 years ago, guys. I remember it like it was this morning. This is 10 years ago. Now, I am in my prime. I am getting ready to fight for championships. I'm fit. I'm in shape. I'm also 50 pounds bigger than Nate Diaz. Just the, just the reality. We're going to go in there and spar. Well, okay, I'm going to go take him down like I do in all of my other rounds. I'm having a hard time getting him down. Can't, I can't get him down. He knew how to play the fence. He knew how to keep distance, but he also he was real good with short stuff when I would get inside. He would do to me what Coach Clayton calls put a hole in the guy's gas tank. Put, put a hole in the guy's gas tank under Clayton Hire's terms means you hit him in the body. And we would hit me in the body. He would, you know, it's one of those things. It didn't matter if I had 50 pounds or not. Now, all of a sudden, he's wearing me down a little bit. And no matter what good shape he's in, I should still be able to hold up. In theory, I'm in shape myself, but I'm also, I'm bigger. 
He's the one that's got to carry the weight around. It's very hard to take down. To the point that it was very frustrating. And Caesar Gracie watched the go. Richard watched the go. Matt Lindlin watched the go. It was the five of us. This is what happened. So Matt Lindlin was saying to me, hey, how come you weren't taking him down? Well, I was trying to take him down. Let me ask Nate, why, why, how come you're so hard to take down? Listen to what his answer was. This whole story I just gave you is to, here's the payoff. We were wearing big gloves. We had boxing gloves, right? Anytime you spar, you're either in what we call the little gloves, meaning MMA, we're in the big gloves, meaning boxing gloves. He had boxing gloves on. And he said, I can't work as well on the ground when I'm in boxing gloves. It's hard for me to set up some of my groundwork in my jujitsu, so I stayed on the feet. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop, stop everything. It was your choice? You, you have within you a takedown defense that was enough to stop me on my best of times with 50 pounds. You have that within you. Why aren't you always choosing to do it? And therein lies the problem. Therein lies possibly the only problem with Nate Diaz in the history of his career is he doesn't mind giving up that position. He doesn't mind. It's not that he doesn't know how. I found that out firsthand. He, he never let us go to the ground. He fought all of my takedowns and kept us on the feet because he, with big gloves on, he didn't really want to work off the ground. So he just avoided that position completely. It did not change the effort that I was trying to get him there. I didn't even know that he thought that until after the fact. If I could have got him there, I would have kept him there. I would not have let him up. I mean, right, the gym and gyms have different rules on what you do when you're wearing big gloves and little gloves. It was very telling when Nate gave me this very calm and sincere answer. But it also let me in on something else about Nate. He does know how to stop the takedowns. He has put time into that. He believes he does well in a fight when he has the small gloves on, when he's on his back. It's very meaningful. Nate's only done two things ever. That if I could go back and grab him and say, Nate, stop doing this, it's that. He will concede position. And two, he doesn't respect leg kicks. You want to kick him in the leg, go ahead and kick him in the leg. He doesn't, re he doesn't respect that. He doesn't see that as a, a value add. He doesn't see that as something that changes the fight. And you guys know that if you watch him to some degree. I'm just here to let you know these are by choice. Nate is very difficult to take down. This whole idea that he's going to be thrown down and kept there and he's going to be ragged off, it may, may, may very well be true. It just doesn't have to do with why we're there that night, which is who's going to win the fight. And there's question marks around Shemaya. Right, if a fight is ever harder than you thought it was going to be, well, what's going to lead you to a conclusion of how hard a fight is going to be? Well, a lot of times what everybody else tells you. You got a pretty good circle around you. It's your team, it's your coaches, it's your workout partners. If they are dismissing, if they at all have the attitude that the spread had when they opened at 8-1 to one and moved to 12-1, to one, if they do any of this, he's going to quickly, right? Shemayev is going to quickly find himself in a contest that's harder than he thought it was going to be. And there are questions. For example, just the management of energy. We, we know that Shemayev used up his energy in his fight with Gilbert Burns. And so people question, can he go 25 minutes? I got to stop you, though. That fight wasn't scheduled for 25 minutes. And Shemayev did exactly what he should do. He should use all of his energy. And he did, and he was worn down. If you looked at that, Jemayev and said, well, he couldn't go two more rounds. If you came to that conclusion, he wasn't supposed to go two more rounds. And I don't think that, I don't think that it's a good or fair assessment of where somebody's at. I, I don't. But I realize that that is still out there. And we all realize that 25 minutes is exactly what Nate would like to do. And we also realize that the potential for 25 minutes is nothing that Jemayev has been scheduled in yet. It's a question. But I feel that it comes back to prove my point that just because Nate, Nate got ragdolled, just because Nate got taken down, just because he got pounded on, that was 15 minutes ago. I mean, right, if we're in a standard fight, that was 15, that was 20 minutes ago. What's that got to do with right now? Because them boys are still standing in there in front of each other. So both things can be true. Nate can get taken down against his will. Nate can win the fight. On any given night, both of those statements can be proven to be true.